Hello, my name is Joe Murray. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and a member of the Celiac Disease Program here at the clinic. Um, today I'm talking about a paper that was recently published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology. And this was a piece um, that my colleagues and I, as uh, members of the North American Society of Study for the Study of Celiac Disease, uh, to comment on recent uh, work that's been published uh, on celiac disease prevention. There have been two very large trials that were published late in 2014, both of which explored factors that could lead to celiac disease in children at risk. Now, how are these children at risk? They belong to families where there already is celiac disease. Both of these studies um, endeavored to see if celiac disease could be prevented by altering the timing or the amount of gluten introduced into the diet of the child. One study um, looked at a delay in introduction of gluten, and the other study looked at giving a very small amount of gluten early in infancy to overlap with breastfeeding. Neither strategy succeeded in reducing the risk of celiac disease in the children. This, of course, was a disappointment. This was, these were two very well designed and executed trials requiring significant resources. And they told us that despite what we think we knew based on observing people over time, what we call observational or epidemiologic data, that we really weren't, when we actually came down to it and we tested the hypothesis that these ideas, that is, could early, low-level introduction of gluten to overlap with breastfeeding or could delaying breast, uh, the introduction of gluten in the diet make any difference? They did not. Now, it's incredibly important information, even though it is disappointing. And what it does is it should galvanize us to look broader and look at intrauterine events, look at other environmental events that might inf impact the risk of celiac disease, and look at adulthood. What are the things that can occur in adults that can drive celiac disease for the first time? This is curious because these are people who have had a genetic predisposition to celiac disease their entire lives and who have been eating gluten for most of that life but don't develop celiac disease until later. And research must be um, energized to try and understand what are the environmental factors that are driving this dramatic increase in celiac disease that we've seen over the last two decades. Thank you.